Good afternoon everyone. So since the lockdown begins, I've been stuck at home every day and to be honest, Monday to Sunday feels almost the same. And I have a problem. So I've been wanting to meditate radical, uh, regularly. I've been wanting to read books regularly. I've been wanting to do uh, a lot of things regularly. I, I've not been exercised a lot when I'm at home and you know, Monday to Sunday all feels the same. So I, I have a problem. I can't keep track of all this thing. So I have used some of the other traditional way. I write things on the whiteboard. I have things listed on the calendar. I have Google Keep for my to-do list. Just that it's so difficult when you don't have a centralized way to to organize things and just to you know just to update that single one they can see and update directly. So the the idea of count come from last night when I'm walking around and think and remind me of a, a project by Simone Gertz. Uh, she actually made a, a big panel where you can try to turn on a switch on and on every day for 365 days for, for just do one thing. Let's say you, I meditate today, I'm going to press the button and it will lights up on that day. And over the course of a few months or a few weeks, you'll be able to easily review on your progress and you're able to update yourself and reflect on what I have done and what I have not. So I'm not a maker myself. I don't have a lot of like hammers, you know, uh, saw or glue gun or, or whatsoever. But what I am is, uh, I, I wouldn't call myself a real coder, but I can make things work with that shit over here. So what I want to do is that instead of a uh, physical hardware, I want to develop some app that can help myself to do my exercise, my audiobook, uh, my meditation, and so on. So these are the this is the thing that I whipped out in the last night. Yes, app developer, this is not the best way to do things, but it's just some quick and easy way that I think everyone at home will be able to, to follow me and do themselves. So this is the tutorial for that. So uh, what I have here is a calendar. So what I have done uh, for the last, uh, for today actually, when I'm filming this, and these are the amount of time that I've spent for each of the activities. Uh, these are the to-do list, which is today is a Monday, so I'm supposed to do meditation. So this will update based on the day. Monday, you have a different list. Tuesday, is a different list. Wednesday, you a different list. And yes, you can list all of them down uh, directly because I'm using a desktop for the preview. And if you actually switch back to a smaller screen, it's very hard to see. So I want to minimize it to only display the thing I need to do today, currently, right now. And the completion on the right here will be the things that I just updated where I have done. So I've done half an hour of exercise and I've finished half an hour audiobook that I want to. So I'm currently actually on a book called, actually I forgot the name of the author, but it's called The Death of Money. So it's actually quite interesting about uh, a bit of economics, money and you know, those banking, this kind of thing. So the third tab over here will be the input. So that, these are the different activities that I need to do. Meditation, exercise, you know, house cleaning and so on. So what are the time that I begin to do an activity? and how long that it lasts and a little bit of remarks. So if I want to do another testing over here, I save it. Uh, it should actually, so, uh, so I need to test one. Okay, so let's see, I am doing all the good news. Let's say I, I try to do it every Friday and you know, and so on. So when I do this, they add another color and if you go to the overview, you can see that I spent 30 minutes on my audio book, uh, 30 minutes on my liquid news and exercise and so on. So of course the pie chart is an overall update while a daily update will be updated in the table here so that's easier to see. So how do you do that is app sheets. So if you don't know app sheet is just a very very simple no coding platform and they've just been recently acquired by Google to to what they, what they do is that they take a data sheet something like a Google Sheets and they convert into an app they can use on your phone. And the best thing is that for the free tier it is 10 free user and I'm doing this for myself which is the best thing because I don't need to pay I just code it myself use it myself and I can I can just use the app freely overall so let's start with the databases so if you don't know uh, app coding or trying to develop app, an app onto any platform it's just databases with logic so once you have your structured databases ready it's just a logic of converting them over and try to make some uh, user interface to interact with them so in this case, I have four different tabs over here in my Google Sheets. So you don't have a Google account, sign it up, it's free. If you're in China, I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm sure there's some alternative that you can go forward to. So here is the master uh, sheet, which is the first one, and here's the key. So what the key is, is that in the structured database, you always have something called a unique key, where it is unique to the individual rows of it. And and you know there, there can never be duplicated uh, unique keys. Otherwise, there'll be a clash and 
the database will not be able to understand how it works. Okay, so the second one is from the time that I start my activity. So usually it will not duplicate, but you know, uh, we just make it duplicate and we'll see what happens later. Okay, so there are the duration activities and these are activity one, two, three. So why is it in one, two, three? It's because we have another tab here called activities. So in this case, I'm also gonna hard code my activity into individual keys so that in, in the case that I want to update an activity rather than changing the whole description and try to match it, I just change the key number. So change activity one to activity three, the description will change automatically rather than having to you know, change the word by word and use a string to, to encode and store all the process. So when you have a large database storing keys, it's a lot easier than storing the strings. So let's say the activity one is I want to sleep. Maybe, you know, just part of your thing. Uh, the second one, I want to clean the room. Uh, the third one, I want to do my game. Maybe I want to play a game for half an hour. Uh, maybe the fourth one, I want to uh, eat something healthy. Or then the fifth one, maybe I want to, you know, uh, write something on my blog or, or anything, you know, whatever whatever activities you want along the day. So once you're done with the activity and one, two, three, four, five, as well as the master, we have the, so now we need to plan. So what, what I do with plans is that day is one, two, three, four, five, and one, two, three, four, five. So of course you can have six and seven. So in app sheet, at least the default uh, way of arranging the date is that one is actually referring to Sunday. So you have to keep that in mind when you're trying to code it out because our you know, US uses Sunday as the first day of the week. So what do you want to do on Sunday? What do you want to do on uh, Monday? And so on and so forth. So let's say activity, uh, I want to do one every day. Two over here, three over here, and four over here, five over here. So let's say these are the activities that I want to do over the day. So of course, if you want an easier way to visualization, you can sort the range by column A. So you can know that Monday, I'll have two activities I need to finish. Uh, Tuesday, there's two activities I need to finish. Uh, Wednesday, sorry, uh, this is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I have uh, two activities to finish. And this should be able to give uh, the, the, the program a rough idea of what do you want to do and what do you want to accomplish by the end of the day. So once we've done that, let's go to the AppSheet interface. So once you're done with AppSheet interface, you can just create a new app quite easily. And you say, I want to start with my own data. So this is the, uh, I'm just going to put it at you. So this is a tutorial. So put it as a go tutorial app. Tutorial app. So in this case, what category, uh, whatever you want, is actually for uh, your own. It's not going to be distributed to anyone because then you will need to uh, do something like, uh, what is that called? Um, specific, to their, specific to their mail address and then filter based on the mail address. A little bit more complicated. Let's not go down that road. I think I'll need to uh, blur my screen over here. So this is actually my Google Drive. So let's go to go settings and choose the the name of the Google Sheet just now. So here they will try to set up your app and overall the process should be quite seamless if you are coding exactly as per uh, what I do over there just now. So let's wait a few seconds for them to set up an app and see that if they can get everything correctly. Okay, so we're done. So they have imported the master over here into it directly and they have, let's say, look at the user interface. So for them, for those that have not followed my last video, uh, there's a few things that you need to look at. The, mo the two most important thing, the first one is the data. So this will connect to your Google Sheet just now. And these are the name of your tabs. And these are what we call a different tables. Okay, so the second one is the UX, which stands for user experience. So these are the main user interface that you will see. And on the right here, there was a user preview of how your app will look like on the phone, on a tablet, and if you press here, open new tab, it will be how it look like on a computer screen. So in this case, the one that you look at in the beginning of the video is done through uh, a computer screen, which is a much bigger overview that most people will be able to see. So of course, the, the brilliant thing about AppSheet is that, is that it actually works on everything. So it works on your phone, your tablet, and your computer. So if you need to use it anywhere, that's, it's, there's no problem with that. It's quite easy. Okay, so we have a calendar, which actually doesn't have anything. We have a master, which of course doesn't have anything again. So let's now try to see how do we, how do we start? 
Okay, so the first thing is to go in and make sure that, uh, go into your data, sorry, and go into your column and make sure all the columns are correct. So the first thing is that for the key, we want it as a key, so that's correct. The label, of course, we don't want it as a label. For the label, we want it as the activity. Okay, so that's done. So for from is a date time, no problem. Duration is a duration, beautiful, perfect. So this is, so from, of course, the initial value, we want it to be now. So every time the user try to enter the data, it will automatically calculate that this is the current data. So when we click this, uh, this is the key in that you will ask us to use key. No worry, not done yet. And duration and activities. So something wrong, the time is not here. So we will need to figure that out later. Editable here. Okay, so let's just go back and you should go yeah, later. When we save it, it should be fine. So don't worry about too much about that yet. And here another, so let's just get column by column. Row number you can ignore, it's just that it will automatically put in a row number just in case you don't have a good unique key in your uh, table. Key, of course, is something that I put it in. We'll change that later. Actually, we need to change it into text because uh, the, the problem with unique key, you can't really use row number. They are, they are not a really good, um, what they call? They're not a really good unique value because when, when multiple users try to enter into the same row and you know there's some caching issue when there might be clashes of it so what we usually do is that we we take the we take two other columns and we try to concurrent them and join them together basically to create that kind of unique key so in this case i'm trying to put uh, activity and the time so this will create of course a very unique value that cannot be uh, replicated and it will not have a crash okay so these are automatically calculated it doesn't need to be show and it's a from time date duration duration correct so activity is wrong activity itself is not a number it's actually a reference to the other table so what we do is go to activities and we choose a reference to another table so what we realize here is that oh there's no table where's the table so now we have we have faced a problem so let's go back to table and try to import the other table that we have so you can see there's a uh, very useful description on suggestion on what you can do. So in this case, we want to add activities as part of the um, reference table over there to convert the, the keys into the description. So you go to columns for this one, you realize that uh, labeling is wrong. So let's take label to, to the activities and you're done. Okay, so yeah, yeah, it's a reference table, correct. So don't worry about that, we'll solve that later. So we also need a reference table for days because when we calculate days later, it'll be easier if we have a table that automatically tells us uh, which day is which. And it's easier to reference and easier to store a large amount of data if you always use them as a vector. So let's go for column and change the labels to day again. So later it will show us days. Lastly, we also need to add the last one, which is the plants. Okay, so let's go to plans and wait for a moment for it to load. And yep, let's do column. So here, there's a good, very nice compute key over here where they have, you know, concurrent days and the other one because obviously row number doesn't work and our keys doesn't work. So this is great. Don't change it. But what we do is we actually need to change this into the label. So we'll be able to have Activities, this is not a number, this is a text. And there is an activity, no, 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 sorry. Uh, activities is a number, is a reference actually. So, yep, so days are also a reference. So what happened over here is that for days, so let's just change all this thing, for, sorry. So let's go back to our original plan master first. So we just now have a problem with activities because we can't get a reference. So in this case, now activities can be referred to the activities reference and you're done so that should be solving our problem so activities is done and days is done and lastly we go to plans which of course have two different reference so days we need to change the reference to days done and uh, activities we have to change it to reference activities and done so this will set up our data structure nicely for the calculation later on so don't worry current at this stage that you don't understand why we are doing all of this okay so Always good to save a little bit just in case your computer crashes or your browser crashes or you know your Wi-Fi crashes or whatever, you know, just to save your progress so that it doesn't get lost. Because 
it, it, it will actually get lost. So you realize there's a lot of nonsense over here that we don't want. Don't care, let's go step by step. Okay, so the first thing is to create an input, input platform to see if your input works. So let's go to the user interface. What I usually like to do is just, just delete everything because we don't really want... I, I, rather, I like to start afresh, not that it's the best thing to do, it's just that it's easier on the mind not to have to comprehend so many things, okay? So let's just delete all the user interface, you give an error, or you can't. Okay, let's add form. So now I've added a form. So this one, let's just uh, delete as well. So the form, let's just go to the right. Okay, so that should be done. Okay, so now for form, hmm, something is wrong. Something is wrong. Okay, so let's delete this. Okay, it's not very happy. So let's go to form. Okay, so form over here is keys so that's wrong duration that's wrong activity that's wrong. so activity is correct so we are able to choose the activity we want but key is wrong where's where's our from and duration is wrong because we want it to be default on let's say half an hour so it's easier for the user to key in so let's go back to our data it means our data has something wrong okay so so look at your your forms uh the the the, the tab or the data that is related to is a master so we go back to our data and fix what we can over here Okay, so let's view columns. We look at our keys, shows not necessary, show editable, and this is the labels activity, and the keys is the keys. Okay, so I'm not sure why that thing is in the sink, but it's okay. I suppose keys is fine. So keys are not the one that we need to key in. Okay, so editable should be editable. Uh, this is the initial value, it should be 30 minutes. And this is the uh, time, so you just put it now. So this will always put it as the current one and looks about right. Let's just save it and see if it works. Okay, it doesn't work. From sheet formula. Okay, so I forgot to do one thing. So in this case, when you start afresh, remember that your uh, data here should not contain any formula. So I, I did it just now for, you know, a little bit of what we call uh, convenience and I forgot to paste them as value. So once you paste them in value, they should not, yeah, they should not contain any formula because you want all the formula to be contained within app sheet itself and you do not want the formula to, you know, it's, it's very confusing when app sheet sees a sheet formula and Google sheet formula and they're just very confused about that. So let's just change this back to the date, sorry. This is not the date, actually this is the date time, so we need the date and the time. Let's go to app sheet again. So what we do is that we, once we refresh the, uh, the concept, let's just refresh our structure and see if that solved our problem over there just now, where we can't edit the date time. Okay, so it will take some time and I don't know why and nothing I can do about that. Okay, so what now we have, let's just put here and let's go for now. So this will actually tell the, the, the program that we want the initial value to be now and this one will be that and key will be just a concatenation of the two columns so concatenation of the two columns so the column will be the number from and the second number will be the activities so this would create a very unique key that is unlikely to be duplicate in the at least for the for the foreseeable future and the foreseeable situations that we have okay See if it works, doesn't work. I not have an app formula, the app formula will be removed. So the key cannot have an app formula. I have no understanding of why does it happen. So master cannot remove a sheet formula and initial value. Master cannot sheet formula, sheet now equals has been removed. Well, that's what we call sheet happens there. So I'll try to fix this and I'll come back later so that I don't waste my memory on the recordings. Hello, I'm back. So I figured out the problem. So the problem is that when you delete something in Google Sheet, like I delete all the data here just to troubleshoot, it takes a certain amount of time for App Sheet to discover and sync back the data to realize that it is missing. And that's why that they still think there's an app formula. So I also figured out there's some other way that you can just go to edit over here and go to auto compute. And if there's a spreadsheet formula, you can just remove the spreadsheet formula and key into here as the initial value. So that should be able to solve all the problems that I have just now where things are not being 
uh, work out. So let's go back to our form. So what we're doing there is that we want to do a form that correctly and able to give us a way to input the data just based on what activity I'm doing and how long have I been doing it. So in this case, I can go to form and you can see we have a from data where you can edit if you're doing it 20 minutes earlier and you forgot to lock. A duration easily editable, no problem. And activity is a bunch of activities one to five that we have actually uh, tried to create just now. Of course, if you want to create a new one, no problem, just create a new one. So let's say key is six, activity is new act and save. So from now on, if you go to activity, you should be able to go to new app and that will allow you to, to add on more and more different type activities without going back to the Google Sheets. So save, now we have one activity. Okay, so now we want to figure out a way to display the, the thing that we are just keying in. Okay, so we want a way to display all the data that we key in. So let's just go to the easiest way, which is add a table. So add a new view, add a table. We're gonna go for master, so this is just everything. So let's just call it a master again. So, okay, so in this case, done. So these are all the things that we have. So of course you can go for column order a little bit. So I want to from and activities without the durations, I don't care. Or in this case, maybe just, um, maybe the better way would be for duration activities so that I've been doing this for the last, for half an hour, uh, maybe put a date in the back from. So this will, if you put it a little bit bigger, so you'll be able to see that this is the time and maybe just, you know, do, do the other way around. Let's try. Uh, from, uh, I do this activity for how long and so forth and so forth. So you can customize a little bit based on uh, your liking basically. So these are the master. So this is a master table that we install somewhere in case we need to cross check the data that we key in. So now we can try to key in another one. Let's just go to sleep and maybe March. So last month I go to sleep. So save it. Now we will create another data. We can do master. We will see two different data based on the date overall. So if you want the data to be sorted based on the date, easy. Just go for uh, from and go for ascend. descending would be better so that you, the newer one is always on the top. So we have done the table. We have done this. Let's just go for the calendar view, shall we? So let's new view. Mm, let's go for how so that stands for calendar and go for calendar and we should be able to start uh, start date from and start time is from uh, end date we don't have one and date we don't have one category what well, doesn't matter so that should allow you to have an overview of what happened and when do you key in certain things so may should it should appear here later no problem so save it a little bit just in case and sometimes when it doesn't compute, also you can do the same thing. Because this is date time, oh no, open doesn't really matter. So from, so we should be able to see the, so we can actually put all the same so that it should show up here. So it wouldn't show up as a time duration in the day because we don't have that calculated. You can actually add that manually later. We'll see if we have time to show you. Okay, so it doesn't really matter as long as you know I completed what I do today. So now come the difficult thing. So we are able to key in things, we are able to display things and as an overall, and we'll be able to see it on the calendar as an overall. So would I be able to so would I be able to do it daily or let's just do the pie charts first? I think that would be easier. So the for the pie chart is relatively straightforward. Just go to uh, create a new view, type, and let's go for chart. So in this case, I'm going for aggregated donut or let's say aggregated pie. And I want it to have the sum of activities and what are the columns will be the activities. That So I spend most of my time in the new thing that I do and I spend 14 amount of time sleeping and so on. So this will be the difference between thing and charge color, maybe change a little bit to red and thing. So you can customize a little bit by changing this color this will be the first color, second color, and so on. So there's many ways that you can customize this. So we are done with the pie chart. Let's just go for uh, calculate duration, shall we? So in this case, we have not have a calculate duration just now. So I'm going to do something new, which is use a visual column. So visual column is something that you have uh, not included in the initial data table, but you need it uh, based on the calculation. So what you do is that I have very easy. I just go for column from date time directly so from plus durations so this should be able to give me another date time so you want to be sure of course you can put another date uh, date time around it but it should be fine okay so save 
done. So this will give you another column of data for you to calculate. So if you go back to our calendar just now, uh, you should be able to go from here and date and time is two. So now you should be able to see from the beginning to the end. So if it's half an hour, you should display a half, half an hour bar in your calendar view. That's how you'll be able to see the time durations uh, if everything works out all right. Yeah. Does it work? I have no idea, to be honest. <laughs> so the data is there. So, so calendar view doesn't doesn't work. It's okay. It will we'll come back to this later. We'll see we'll see what we can do about that. Sometimes it just doesn't work for no reason. That's very normal. So start time from and date is uh, none. And yep. So I have to do that. Yep. So otherwise, it get very confused. Yep, so if you go today, you're able to see the half an hour slot that we have over here and we'll be able to see that it is around half an hour. I don't think it's exactly accurate. Yeah, so around half an hour slot over here. So you're able to see the time duration if you move multiple. Let's just try another one just to see if it works. So let's go to right and this is the two. So it will also be displayed here if you want to. And if you change it to 35, you can see that uh, this changes as well. Save. So you can see this is a half an hour slot earlier, this hour slot later. So it will overlap a little bit. And it is actually not colored, so actually we should change that a little bit as well. So let's see if we are able to do that. Late the cat so category. Okay, this. Yep. So you can see that different categories will now display in different colors. So we were able to make it show up later on, but let's let's not care it for now. So let's now deal with the, the, the more difficult part of things, which is how do I display the data only for today? So in this case, I'm going to use something new called slices. So in this case, there's two things we need to do. First is the planning slices. Second is the uh, process slices. So in this case, the, the, the easier way is to have uh, what I have done today. So it's two things basically, what I need to do today and what I have done today, like as demonstrated in the, the, uh, the app earlier on. So in this case, uh, this is very confusing. So I'm not going to use it, I'm going to delete it. So what are slices? Slices are, uh, as the name suggests, a slices of your data. So it's um, it's just based on, uh, what is that called? What a, a filtered version of your data. So it doesn't contain all your data. It contains a fraction of the data based on the car based on a certain condition. So in this case, we're going to go for to do first. So let's go for the planning. So how do we do to do is to make sure that the day calculated to today is the day calculated. So how do you do that is go to time. There's something called work day. So weekday actually not work day. Yeah, weekday over here. So what we do is that we pipe a weekday and we need a date input. So a date input, we can just put today. So this will give our a calculation of today. So today is um, Monday, so it should give a one. So now we need to calculate which column in our data table has a one. In this case is the date. Okay, so in this case, it will only calculate. So let's go. To, so just to remind, just to refresh our memory, let's go to our planning over here. So it will actually have one to sorry. Yeah, it's not a Monday. So today is uh, Monday it will be a two. So it should show up activities one and activity three. In this case, it's activity one is sleep, activity three is game. Wow, such a nice Monday, isn't it? So, okay, so let's go to to-do. So that will be, that will ensure that this will only display the day of today. So just to check what you could do is to add a new view, go to tables and go to the slices. Okay, so this will display and everything. So does it work? Seems like it doesn't work, isn't it? So let's save it first, just in case. Sometimes when you key in certain things and it doesn't work and you realize it's because it's not refreshed. We'll never know, actually. I still don't really understand the background architecture of app sheets. Yep, so done. So luckily I have not wasted my time doing all of this. So it's a Tuesday, basically. So Tuesday, so is today a Tuesday? Okay, so, so today is a Tuesday. I am, I am time zone problem a little bit over here. Okay, so in this case, um, this is done. So maybe column view, we do not want to have so much. Uh, we only want to have the days. 
and we only want to have the activities. Yeah, so today is Tuesday, the activities uh, sleep and game basically. Okay, so this is the plan for today. Now, now I need to figure out how to display what I have done today. Okay, so the planning is done. Let's go back and do the same thing for what I've done today. So let's add a new slice for completed. Okay, so in this case, we're gonna filter based on master because that's where our data input. How do I filter is that the, the date time, which is the from, in this case, this is the date time, we need to convert to work day. So how do we do that is that there's a few ways to do it. I'm gonna make it easier for everyone to understand is uh, to convert a date time to a date. You go to date and convert to a date. Okay, so yeah, so value to on completion. Actually, I think I can just throw in the thing. I think it should work, right? I never actually try this. So let's try this. Okay, so just put a weekday over here and see if it can be equals to the thing from today. So today close. Okay, so same concept apply. It's the weekday from the from, which is the the time that you start equals to today. So save. And again, let's save and see if we should be able to see the data of completed. Okay, so let's go back to user interface and create another table to ensure that it works. And let's create tables, create tables, and this is all today. Is it all today? No, nope, this is not today. So we know we have a problem, isn't it? Oh, no, to do. Completed. It's new app on the right. So this only display for today. So this is perfect. So what I need to do now is uh, this is uh, to do. So let's just put the name the table to do. And this one is completed. Let's display it them completed. So what we want to do is to display both table into a single tab. So what you can do is for, for the table that you don't want to show, go into reference. Uh, okay, so that's done for things that you don't want to do. So form we're going to show. Kind of want to show, so this one we might not want to show. Let's put it in the manual. Okay, so for to do and completed, so completed also we don't want to show. Let's go to reference. So now we have a calendar and our form. So now let's put in our to do list and our completed list. So what to do is that you add a new view called uh, uh, what is that called? A dashboard. Okay, so a dashboard is something the uh, a user interface that can contain multiple other view. Okay, so we can create many and can port put all into dashboard and you will display everything into a single tab. So what we want to add in is the uh, to do and completed. So to do and completed over here. Okay, lush, lush. Okay, so you have to, this is to do, we need to sleep and game. Uh, I have write and do some new activities. So maybe completed, you can change a little bit of view, but for now on, let's just try to finish our things that we are supposed to do that. We're supposed to sleep and eat. So let's go to here, this is the time, let's go to sleep. Done, and let's go to eat. Done. Okay, so you go back to our, this one, which is the new view. Actually, let's call it the, 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 the dashboard, maybe. It'll be easier to understand, to comprehend. So in our dashboard, uh, we'll be able to see today we need to sleep and eat. I have slept and I have eat. I have write and I have do something extra. There's no problem with that. Okay. Oh no, it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, let's save it again. I don't know why something something wrong in the background. Perfectly normal if you experience it for yourself. It, it will work afterwards. Overall, I've been using AppStreet for two months for my budget and it's extremely stable. It's just that in the development, it's a little bit of a, a here and there. Okay, so you can see to-do list is here, completed list is here. The input allows me to just uh, do all this thing and come from. And if I have, I have a calendar view as well as, you know, all this thing. So I also display a pie chart just now. So let's just continue with the pie chart, okay? So calendar, let's go move it to reference because we do want to see it. And now we need to move the pie chart in the, and the calendar into a new dashboard and add another dashboard. So the dashboard should contain the calendar and the pie chart. Okay, so now you have, this is the overview, it's quite overview and dashboard. Hopefully that's not too confusing. So overview will contain a calendar and a pie chart, while dashboard will contain the to-do list and the completion. So I actually just change it to dashboard to something else. So dashboard, I will just change it to 
daily activity and overview will give you the overview of what you have done okay now form able to do anything so let's just change a little bit on the form as well so these are already minor tweaking so if you just want it to work it's kind of working now so i'm just going to do a minor tweaking and brand modification just so that it looks nicer on the overall okay so let's go to this one so instead of using a uh what is that called a button count let's see if i can use another one so page style i want to do yes it's fine form style default it's fine side by side it's fine as well so cancel condition bottom is fine and finish view and let's go to so for finish view i want it to go to uh, the dashboard so that will be the to do no mm, there'll be a daily yeah row key is fine page count is fine activity is fine okay so everything is kind of okay display is fine behavior is fine so i might need to go in and change it from the things side automatic page count side by side top and bottom auto save to reopen okay so that's fine no problem at all and what if i want to hide this okay let's say two is not necessary so let's go to data and master and we go to column so we go here because we don't want to show this we just hide this so it will be hidden from the view already okay so activity is fine duration is fine everything is good okay so let's change a little bit because i usually like it that that mode everything it's easier to see okay the colors also looks better and I also, maybe I want to add a logo that is slightly better. So this is to do this. And we're in a background image of this one. So a little bit carbon fiber, we're going to show logo and header. We're going to do this so that it has better colors. Uh, hard menu, no, uh, show this one. Yep, I want to show menu, no, not necessary. And data and well, I'm, I'm kind of done actually. So I, I think I'm kind of done here. So just for recap of what we wanted to do earlier. So this is a budget at uh, the goal tracking app. So it's in encourage, motivate, and make sure that I remember what I need to do every day. So what happens here is that we have a first thing, a form where you can fill in what you have done. So if I played game for 30 minutes, I can lock down that you no, know, I have played my game for 30 minutes, I feel good with myself, or let's say I want to uh, write something for my blog every week, every Tuesday, let's say. So this will allow me to, to remind myself that I need to run. Okay, so activities are set so that today, in Tuesday, I need to do this too. And these are the completion that I have. I've just keyed in just now. So overview would be able to, yep, you need some, some problem with the uh, background synchronization. Let's just save it and see what happens. It, it should revert everything back to normal. Yep, so overview will have the calendar of what I do every day. You can go to week, day, and see what happens. And these are the uh, relative time that I spent. Actually, this is wrong because they go based on the uh, the, the the aggregated summary is wrong. Let's go to fix that a little bit. Well, apparently I'm not done there. Some activities. Yeah, I'm correct. So you can do count. You can also do sum, and you can also do average. Okay, okay, done. Okay, so this is the percentage of time for the duration and the activity itself. So this, I think, looks a lot better. I don't think this is very useful because I think I just want to, I just want to complete my target and the time itself doesn't really matter. And there's, there's many other ways to do it as well. So that's one of the way to do it. That's one way to do calendar, one of the way to do pie chart. I don't know why it's revert. When you save it, it should revert to what you need to do. And this is the form that you can save itself. So if I save it, this should be ready to, to go for you to track your goal and stuff. Okay, so if you want to share, I think you can go to share and just share to whatever uh, person that you want or you want to keep it to yourself, you can keep it to yourself as well. And this is overview of the uh, plans that we have and how does the architecture of the app look like. So for now, I think I'll sign off for now. I think I don't think there's anything else I want to do that. On, I still don't know how to end the video. Uh, like, subscribe, uh, comment, thingy, uh, give me a question, email. And for now, I hope you enjoy this tutorial. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.